you're referring to Just Green It in essence, and Just Green It is is the book that Lisa and I came out with. It's a, you know, obviously is a visual representation of what products to green with and what not to. And companies change all the time. But I do want to point out that what I think you're also referring to is green washing. There's a lot of green washing in advertising. There are false claims on a lot of products that are claiming to use the words, for example, sustainable, environmentally friendly, natural. These you know type of claims don't have any teeth to them. So you really want to make sure whatever you're looking for from a personal care product uh, to other items, that you're making sure it has a third-party certification that is relevant and has actually held them to that criteria of what they're claiming. You know, you probably know firsthand, for example, you know, organic. You want to make sure it's certified organic. Uh, you know, these terms are so loosely thrown about nowadays, it's really confusing the consumer base. And literally, we've discovered that about one out of three consumers is completely confused as to what is a green product. In your book, Just Green It, do you have examples of certain products, though, that are not green? Oh, we absolutely do, and you know we do. And it wasn't the point wasn't to really badmouth every company, but it but but, tell, but give give us a few here now. Well, okay, uh, you know, just there's obviously basic examples with with cleaning products that, that a lot of people are familiar with. A lot of the traditional cleaning products you want to avoid because they're not really built with or created with ingredients that um, have been cognizant of our health. Um, you know, for example. Like I said, I didn't want to really, totally, you know, everything from a cascade to a finish to, you know, using Lysol, pine salt. Yeah, but hold on one second, Ron. Those we already know are not green products. What I'm trying to find out is, like, ethanol. Ethanol is supposed to be uh, considered a green type of fuel for us to use, so to speak. We find out that ethanol is really not the way to go. We know now that, did you know you can use grass clippings as fuel? You can use grass clippings to use it as part of fuel. I actually had some. Let me see if I can find this. Uh, oh, I don't have it in front of me. I had Dr. Uh, Tyvett, Kerry Tyvett, do some, some research for me, and he found something for me that was really cool that showed me, um, and, and everybody else, this article that was written about ethanol not being in the best interest of our health, and that this, let me see if I can find it real fast, if you can bear with me. Okay. I'm downloading the file. Let's see how. Ah, uh, forget it. It's not going to work. Forget it. But my point is, you have Prius cars. All we right. know Prius cars to be a green product. Let's think about this that I don't think many people take into consideration. What did it take to make the Prius car? How green was that? What will it take to break down the Prius car? What kind of green is that? Is it only green while you're driving it? <laughs> Well, th those are great examples, yeah, and, and, and you know, I, I agree with you. In some cases, it's been overused, and, and that might not be the best thing. You have to be aware of the whole situation. Where did the car come from? You know, where did the parts come from that built the car? You know, those, those are all important aspects um, that, that I find important, but I think your audience is probably most concerned with really the health aspect of green and, and those sort of things. And to answer your question before about various products, I mean, we talk about everything from insulation in your home. You know, a lot of people take for granted just the, the fiberglass insulation they're putting in there from some of the more common organizations like you know, Owens Corning and those, those sort of products that provide fiberglass. And that is definitely detrimental to your health and has been proven to be, uh, particularly if it's damaged when you're insulated. You know. So you have to make proactive decisions in your home uh, that are going to have a, just, uh, a better effect for the health of your family and then ultimately uh, everywhere else. Hey, Ron, there's, there's a cleaning product called Simple Green. Are you familiar with it? Yes, absolutely. Did you know there's a product, there's a chemical in there called ethylene glycol butyl, butyl ether that is known to cause fertility problems? I don't think he's worried about getting pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know that, and you're, you're, you're bringing up a really good point. There are, there are companies out there that are attempting to do the right thing. And so when you first ask me, hey, what, what products are green, which ones are not? We certainly have them listed throughout Just Green It. Um, there are companies that are attempting to make a difference and, and do those things. And they're proactive in it. Uh, and, and obviously, some of them aren't perfect, and that was a prime example. Uh, but you know, I, I'm more comfortable trying to make purchasing decisions for companies that are proactively doing that than those who are not. Intentions don't get you far. People who drink and drive and hit other people or, or maim other people, uh, it wasn't their intention to hurt another person, but they were drunk. I don't care about intentions. I care about what uh, an effect has from a product and how it can help people, what the end result is. 
Okay, what is the end result? I don't care about somebody's intentions. In your book, not in your book, in your uh, website, greennest.com, I love this quiz that you have. You talk about the healthy home quiz, and there are um, 10 questions on there. Uh, you can take this quiz, and one of, the, one of the questions is, how many new chemicals have been put on the market for, the consumer, to you, for, for consumer use rather since World War II? So now, my guess, Ron, was 100,000 new chemicals. Is that correct? You know what? You, it was 50,000, actually. Okay. And that actually was a good guess, one of the highest number on the quiz there. And, and quite frankly, that number is even higher, and, and those are just ultimate, you know, guesstimates, too, in a way, from a variety of organizations. There's been so many chemicals that have been brought into the marketplace, uh, a lot of which haven't been tested on their effects with human health. And a lot of these products, a lot of these chemicals are being put into the products that we're using in our homes. So talk about being toxic. Even if you eat healthy, you are toxic. And my business is a cleansing business, and I try to share that with people. I don't care how great you look or how healthy you eat. If you're not performing a cleanse, you're toxic. That's the end of it. It shows up in symptoms, and symptoms wind up being sleepless nights, sugar cravings, fat gain, pain in your joints, blaming on getting old, sneezing. They're, they're, they're all over the place. Now, here's a true or false question that's on your site, greennest.com. According to the EPA, indoor air pollutants are lower than outdoor air, and I want to say that that is false. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, indoor air pollution typically on average is two to five times worse, even 100 times worse than the outdoor air. And even huge organizations like the EPA, for example, have, have put that claim out there. And it's for a combination of reasons, okay? You talked about intent before. Well, you know, in the, since the 1970s, homes have, there's been a big push on making energy efficient homes, tightly sealed homes. Well, it was good for that aspect of green but ultimately not so good from an indoor air quality perspective, okay? Right. Since we've been bringing in new chemicals, and you just read off earlier, there's 50,000 plus new chemicals that have been brought into the marketplace. These chemicals are getting trapped in our, in our homes, and on average, we're not really getting good air exchanges in our home to allow it to breathe. Therefore, we're trapping everything in. Okay, so coming up next, we'll talk with Ron Barris again from JustGreenIt.net, their new book. He and uh, Lisa, his wife, wrote this book called Just Green It. I encourage you to go to the website, check it out, buy it. And also GreenNest.com. Dr. Jeremy Webster is joining me this morning. Coming up next, what we'll do is we'll talk about some more facts you may not be aware of in... Uh, in their their uh, their quiz, indoor air quality is regulated by the United States government. Is that true or false? How many microorganisms can be found in one square footing of carpeting? Are you doing damage to yourself and you don't know it? How does it show up in your life? We'll talk about the things you should be doing to help your health, your child's health, your significant other, and the environment. 726 Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. 733 Sports Radio 1310, the ticket. George D. John of the train station fitness show. Uh, joining me today is Dr. Jeremy Webster, and we have a guest on the, on the show, Ron Barris. He's the author, well, with his wife, Lisa, of Just Green It. You can go to their website, justgreenit.net, and we're talking about what really isn't green if you're trying to help yourself in the environment, and what is, and what are some of the steps you can take to uh, prevent yourself from attracting, so to speak, disease. Uh, Ron's on the phone with us now. Ron, one of the things I wanted to mention, you, you have a great quiz, and I really like this quiz on your site, greennest.com. How healthy is your, how safe is your home? What's it called? Oh, th it, well, the Green Nest Healthy Home Quiz on the front page, but, but, but thank you for the plug. I appreciate it, George. I, re I really do like that. Uh, one of the questions I, I mentioned earlier is, um, uh, it's a true, true or false question. Indoor air quality is regulated by the United States government. I'll go with a big false on that, right? 100% right. It is false. We have to be proactive. We have to take, really, the health of our own home in our own hands. Uh, you wanted to bring something up, Dr. Webster. Yeah, talking about the, uh, the ethanol and the, the electric cars made me think, what, something I think our audience needs to know is that even though you might be trying to do good, sometimes you have to weigh how much good you might be doing in one area versus how much po possible harm you might be doing in another area, Ron. Uh, one simple example, I mean, th this is really not an example that is, that's even difficult to figure out. Uh, a friend of mine, Tom, he told me he was looking to invest in a quote-unquote green plug-in, like electrical outlet yeah. for your house, 
Okay. And when he got <laughs> looking into it a little bit deeper, the only thing that was green about it was the fact that it was painted the color green. That now, was guess what? Uh, now, I invested in a company. I'm not going to get into this. Mm -hmm. I won't make it long. I invested in the company, the science, the scientists that were 